Very recently, OpenAI shocked us all when it revealed its newest AI tool, Sora, an extremely impressive tool that's capable of transforming mere text prompts into captivating and realistic videos. The boundaries of what OpenAI can achieve seem to be expanding at an unprecedented rate. First we had text-to-image conversions, and now we have text-to-video magic at our fingertips. Is there a limit to what OpenAI can do? This sentiment was felt clearly by Adobe shareholders, as Adobe stock is down by 10.5% so far, ever since Sora was revealed. But what does this mean for the future of Adobe, and can OpenAI truly pose a threat to the company? In this video, we're going to talk about OpenAI's newest product and dissect its potential implications for Adobe investors. Then, we'll talk about another big industry player that stands to benefit immensely from OpenAI's relentless pursuit of AI advancements. So don't miss out. Welcome back to PST Markets. Maybe you've already seen the viral video of Golden Retriever puppies playing in the snow, and you might have been surprised to find out it wasn't a real video, but one that was generated by OpenAI's new tool, Sora. The video Sora makes look good and realistic, and some might say that they're a bit too realistic, but as you'd expect they still have some errors in them. But since Sora creates videos in which everything is moving at the same time, it might be a bit hard to spot the errors at first. OpenAI said that Sora currently can generate videos up to a minute long, but it's still in testing and not available for public use yet. Despite this, Adobe's stock fell by 10.5% from the day Sora was revealed until now, meaning that Adobe investors might be worried about the possibility of Sora and OpenAI becoming a direct threat to Adobe. This is because Adobe is famous for video editing software like Adobe Premiere Pro, which includes AI features like auto reframe and scene edit detection, which can automatically convert existing video clips into different aspect ratios and analyze an already edited video clip and break it down into smaller clips, but these AI features don't go as far as generating a video from a text prompt like Sora does. When it comes to generative AI, Adobe has Adobe Firefly, which can generate images from text prompts and automatically add or remove objects, but that's pretty much it. It makes sense why many people think that OpenAI can have a huge negative impact on Adobe, because who would buy Adobe's products and many tools when OpenAI has two products, which are Sora and ChatGPT, that can do the same things and more for just one subscription. So will OpenAI completely displace Adobe in the future? Or is what's happening to Adobe stock right now a result of an overreaction from the market? Even though Sora seems like an extremely impressive tool, and one that Adobe investors should definitely keep an eye on as it develops, it might not be a real threat to Adobe just yet. Let's not forget that Adobe is a really big company and is pretty much the leader when it comes to editing software, with a market cap of nearly $245 billion. Its 2023 quarter 4 results were a new record for the company as it generated over $5 billion in revenue for the first time, and this was an increase of 13% year over year, while its gap EPS reached $3.23, representing a 28% year over year growth. And when you look at the full year's results, you'd see that Adobe made a total revenue of $19.41 billion, which represents 13% annual growth, while the gap EPS for the full year was $11.82. So the company is still making a lot of money and achieving significant growth, but it's also investing heavily in AI technologies, so it's not like it's ignoring the area that OpenAI could beat it in. Adobe is investing in AI to develop micro-interactions in websites and digital products, which could enhance user experience and engagement, and it also said that it will be using AI to improve the accessibility of digital content in areas like automatic image description generation and video captioning, which would make content accessible for people with disabilities. Even though the company suffered a setback when its attempted acquisition of Figma, a collaborative web application for interface design, was blocked, Adobe said that it still remained committed to generative AI, particularly Firefly, which should become a key growth area. Still, OpenAI beats Adobe in the fact that its offerings don't even need editors, and that anyone can design a logo with simple text prompts. But Adobe beats OpenAI when it comes to distribution. In 2024, Adobe recorded 29.5 million active subscribers of Adobe Creative Cloud, which includes Photoshop and Premiere Pro, and they are used by over 90% of the world's creative professionals. This means that Adobe already has an established customer base, and when it comes out with a new product, it can simply and quickly sell that product to its existing users that use Photoshop or Premiere Pro. Being a big company helps Adobe against competitors, even if these competitors have really good products. Not only that, but Adobe can eventually develop something similar to Sora and sell it to its large user base. 
To sum up, Adobe is still a good company to invest in even after the drop in its stock price after OpenAI revealed Sora, and we think that it's extremely likely for Adobe to come out with its own Sora in the near future. But aside from Adobe, there's another company that OpenAI's push for new AI technologies might have an impact on, and this time it's a positive impact. That company is Intel. You might remember that the CEO of OpenAI, Sam Altman, very recently appealed for up to an unbelievable $7 trillion huh? Huh? to develop silicon chip manufacturing capacity that can power artificial intelligence. This $7 trillion he's asking for is equal to more than 20% of the United States GDP, and that's what drew so much attention to his statements. In addition to that, the person who brought AI to the masses saying that the chip industry currently lacks what it will take to support the development of data centers and infrastructure is a pretty big deal. Even though this price tag seems absurd, you can't deny that the investment considered to make the US a leader in the global chip industry, which is what Altman wants to do, will be extremely massive, and it's something that OpenAI AI wouldn't be able to do on its own, and would definitely need partners to achieve. Similarly to Altman's goal of making the US a chip manufacturing leader, Intel aims to be the leading chip manufacturer for the West. And now might be a good time to mention that Altman, as well as the CEO of Microsoft, Satya Nadella, US Secretary of Commerce Gina Raimondo, and a host of global semiconductor business leaders from the likes of Arm Holdings, Broadcom, and others will link up at Intel's next Foundry event in San Jose. In the event, Intel will be providing an important set of updates on its Foundry strategy, and the market for semiconductor Foundry is expected to grow at a CAGR of 7.67% reaching $184.94 billion by the next five years. You should know that Intel's foundry business has been one of its biggest bright spots over the past few quarters, including a 63% jump in 2023's quarter four results. Additionally, Intel's lifetime deal value for its foundry business is now over $10 billion, indicating strong growth potential in areas like advanced packaging. And there's also the fact that industry giants like Nvidia and Qualcomm will likely partner with Intel for packaging and or wafer capacity. Intel is the US market leader when it comes to advanced packaging, which allows multiple devices to be merged and packaged as a single electronic device. The need for foundry and advanced packaging is expected to increase with the rise of AI because advanced packaging offers a good lever to enhance overall chip performance beyond traditional geometric scaling on transistors. So if OpenAI's plans for transforming the supply chain for AI and chip technologies become a reality, Intel will greatly benefit as it's extremely likely for OpenAI to partner up with it, given that Intel's goals align with OpenAI's. To sum up, there are reasons for investors to be bullish on both Adobe's stock and Intel's stock. For Adobe, the company enjoys a large user base and a strong brand that protects it from competitors. And Intel is set to benefit from the rise in the AI sector, as it leads the advanced packaging market and will team up with industry giants like Nvidia, the global AI industry, as well as the global semiconductor industry, and US policy leaders see the immense value in a strong US-based companies for these industries, and that's what OpenAI and Intel are positioned to be. Well, that is everything for now. What do you think? Do you think Adobe's stock is better? Or do you prefer Intel stock? Please let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.